live out our faith, not simply claim that we have faith. We've established the fact that faith is essential and that there is absolutely no substitute for faith for the children of God as it relates to God. We searched the scriptures and we found in Hebrews chapters 11 verse 6 that without faith it's absolutely impossible to please God. We cannot please God without faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 goes on to say, For he that would come to him, or he that would approach God, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder and or responder to them that diligently seek him. So it's impossible to please God as if God can be pleased, but God can't, desires to be pleased by his children. When it says please, it means to be well-pleasing. It means to give satisfaction. It means to make content. It means really to walk in harmony with God. In other words, when it says it's impossible to give satisfaction to God, it's impossible to make God content with us. It's impossible to walk in harmony with God if we have not faith in God. Faith is uh, the basic ingredient for Im approaching God. I can put on clergy garment. We can go in the robes and we can all be in the same color. We can all speak the same all the time. But without faith, we cannot approach God. We first of, all, first of all must believe that he is, he exists, that he is a living, active God. And that he rewards responds to us those who not just beg of him but those who seek him Amen. this has been our topic all year long we've been talking about this and the ultimate object of our faith brothers and sisters is this is that god is god god is god and god deserves to be treated as god he deserves to be honored as god he deserves to be obeyed as god it's for our faith in God and our faithfulness to God. Our faith in God and our faithfulness to God. Amen. It's belief in God and being faithful to God. And when we do that, God is then pleased. We went on to talk about this, 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 this faith thing, and we said that faith relates us to the unseen realm of reality. It says, the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So while we're walking in the earth, we live in the earth, we talk and breathe in the earth, in the physical realm, we see each other's physical body in the earth, there's more to what? we see, touch, hear, smell, and feel. And the only way to get in touch with the realm that is unseen is by faith in God and who he is. That's why the Bible can tell us we walk by faith and not by sight. Because everything in the seen realm is temporal. It's temporary. It's going to go away. But that which is in the unseen realm that we agree to, that we see with our heart of faith in the kingdom of God, is eternal. Well. It's eternal. The Bible says, by faith we understand that the whole world was established yeah. Yeah. by the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, the faith helps my understanding. Because I don't go by just my logic and my reason. I go by the revelation that God gives me of his truth. Because the scientists cannot explain that there was nothing before God. And all of a sudden God speaks and everything comes into existence. The world has a problem with that. But those of us who know God, who it was unseen, we are able to look into the unseen realm and know that God can do whatever he wants to do. And so he not only did he create the world, you and I that are in it, but he sustains the world. And while we are in the body, 
we're also in the spirit. The Bible says when we come to know God as our Lord and our Savior, he blessed us in every spiritual, with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Not only that, he seats us with him in heavenly places. You know what that location looks like, Brandon? It, it says it's far above principalities and powers and spirits. So though in the earth we must put on the whole armor of God, and stand against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. That's just my position in the earth, in the seen. But in the unseen, I'm seated together, eternally protected in the heavenly at the right hand of the Father. So when I run into opposition in the earth, I remember my spiritual position in Christ. That's why Paul is able to go on and say this momentary like affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory. Right. See, in other words, my brothers and sisters, we have to understand we're going to go through things in the earth, but this is not my home. And neither do I get my instructions from here. synchronized we are to be Rico with heaven and speak into the earth what God has already established in heaven where you and I are seated with him I'm gonna make it plain I'm gonna make it plain because what God is looking for is for those of us who understand that hope is our friend now faith is the substance of things hoped for. In the scene, I'm running against profiling, sickness, disease, addiction, jealousy, bitterness, and all of that. But in the unseen, I have a home not built by hands with my name on it. So when I run into the problems of now, I don't walk by my sight. I walk by my faith that the living hope won't die in me. I'm going to make it plain. There's a distinction between faith and hope, and you can't take it away. Faith in the present Hope is in the future. So I have to have my faith in God now and deal with my present problems and pearls and predicaments by the hope that was coming my way. In other words, you worked all week on the scene. Your hope was for the paycheck at the end of the week. And the reason you keep going to work or well, some of us anyway, is because at the end of the week, you're going to get your check. So it doesn't matter how you like it or not or what time you got to get up or not because you got to hope that something's going to happen and faith keeps you pushing because that hope in the unseen shows up on the scene and gives you strength. Whew. God rewards worshipers. God cannot resist a true worshiper. When you watch Jesus in the Gospels and he's walking, going from one place to another, when somebody humbly seeks him, he stops. He cannot refuse to bless a worshiper. He can't do it. Even if he tried, he can't do it. If he was Superman, his kryptonite would be worship. No, I'm, I'm very serious. His weakness 
is one of his children worshiping him. That's why we cannot allow anything to extinguish worship. We're going to be our early day. We cannot allow because worship gets the attention of El Shaddai and Almighty God. And I don't know about you, but I need his attention. I need the attention of God in my life, in my family, in my finances, in my body. I need God's undivided attention. And the way to get it is through worship. The Bible says in John 4, he seeks worshipers. He's a spirit and he's seeking those who will worship him in spirit. And that means, watch this, not just out of your mouth, not just out of your instrument, not just out of your body. But from your spirit. Because I can tell everybody, stand up and give God praise. And everybody in here can be clapping and still not worshiping. We can sing a song as if worship was a genre. It is not a genre. It is what is required of a child of God when they know the worth of God. It is response to God's worth. And we've relegated it to a genre of music as if that's praise music, that's hip hop, that's classical, and that's worship music. No, worship comes from the spirit to the spirit. And then he says, you got to worship him not only in spirit, my innermost man. I will bless the Lord with my whole heart. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul and all that is within me. Whether the music plays or not, whether the worship leader says put your hands together or not, you got to be a worshiper. And when we worship, our souls catch on fire. Our souls catch on fire. But not only spirit, but in truth. Because there is no revelation when there's no, there's no worship when there's no revelation. When there's no revelation of who God is in your heart, not what mama said, not what daddy said, not what pastor said, but when there's no revelation of who God is in your personal heart and spirit, there can be no worship. But when you know God says, I love you with an everlasting love and your name is on it, Bill, your response then is worship. That's why you can't make a corporate audience worship God when there's been no revelation, when there's been no word, when there's been no truth, because truth dispels the lie. And the lies come from the father of lies, who's our ultimate enemy, the devil. Whew. So if I'm going to worship God, I got to be in spirit. It's got to be inside and it's got to be based upon who he has revealed himself to me to be. When I need him, he's my Jehovah Jireh. When I'm in confusion and chaos and he is my Jehovah Shalom. Not because I read it, because I experienced it. And God is seeking worshipers, but Satan wants to steal, kill, and destroy. Worship that's on fire. He wants to destroy it. He wants to, he wants to destroy it. He wants to destroy your lifestyle of worship. He wants to, and he does that. Dream it by distraction and deception. Uh Everyone say distraction. Distraction. The reason he does that by distraction is because he knows in order to worship God purely in in spirit and in truth, you got to keep your focus on the Lord. Come here, Peter. I'm walking on water. But I took my eyes off Jesus. And as soon as I took my eyes off Jesus... I began to sing. But as soon as I called out to Jesus, I got saved. So one thing the enemy tries to do is keep us distracted from what God is doing in our homes, in our closets, and in our churches. That's why it's not time when you come to church to be digging in your pocketbook. It's not time when you come to church to be on on any, if it is not related to the subject matter at hand, it should not be done when we come together between the call of worship and the benediction. Because if I get you distracted and I get you distracted, then I can't move like a Russian mighty wind because you're not on one accord. But he does that also in our lives. He tries to distract us. With our busy schedule, 
How busy can you be that you don't have time for God? How busy can you be that you don't have time for prayer? You don't have time for confession and brokenness before a holy God. How busy can you be? You give everybody else your time. You give the television. You give social media. You give your job. You give everybody else your time. And then you have to fight for time to spend with God. And yet you want to be abundantly blessed. You want God to show up when you need him. And he wants to just have fellowship with you at all times. My brothers and sisters, I just want to talk about this. We, we need to develop a faith that makes worship a priority. Faith should worship. And the Bible is full of people who have unstoppable, unimaginable worship. And I long to be in that place. I long to be in worship, especially in a corporate setting. I don't want to just come and look and go through everything the same. Every week we come and doing the same thing, reading the same thing, singing. I want real worship. And you do too. And especially this generation that we say are not in church. They're in church that they just don't have time for churchy stuff. But faith that worships, y'all, is like the spirit of that prophet Habakkuk. Habakkuk says, though nothing is going my way, I will. I will worship the Lord. There's no olive on the In other words, he's broke, busted, and disgusted. Today's vernacular. That's what it says, Habakkuk. He says, there's no olive on the tree. The fruits bear no field. There ain't no cattle in the barn. I don't have no vegetables, and I ain't got no beef. But I got praise. I got praise. Because when I look around me, there's nothing. But with the eyes of faith to look to the unseen, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So I'm going to worship. That's the same kind of worship Paul and Silas had in that prison when they were beaten and, bo- and flogged. And, and they were sp- there to die in that prison, y'all. But at midnight, the Bible says they sang and, sung pr- and, and prayed and sung praise to God. See, faith worships regardless of the circumstance. Regardless of the enemy trying to steal your, your joy. Regardless of the world trying to rob you. You got to have something the Bible says is called contentment. Everyone say contentment. Thank you, Bill, for playing that song. Jesus, center of my joy. You're the source of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Contentment is not satisfied. Contentment is I'm staying right here until my things change and I'm not complaining. See, God is not looking for people who will complain. He's looking for people who, regardless of what they're going through, will worship him anyway. I wish I had some help here. The Bible says godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment. I ain't got all I want. I want. I'm not all I hope to be. But I'm content. Being on the road that I am now. So I'm not going to be complaining. I'm going to give God praise regardless of what I'm facing right now. Now, I'm going to close this out, but faith has to worship. Regardless of the situation, regardless of the circumstance, regardless of anything that in the seen realm, faith attaches itself to hope in the unseen realm and worships anyway. But you got to be careful of things that will put out your fire. You've got to be careful of things and people that will put out your fire. Fire, y'all, is what we need, and that's what God responds to. Fire is what we need, and that's what God responds to. And often, if you ask Elijah, responds by fire. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about uh, Paul in Acts chapter 16, 28, uh, when, when, when a snake came on him and he shook it off. Y'all do know when the fire gets going, the, sh- the snakes are then exposed. 
When the fire of the spirit gets going, the snakes are then exposed. Because you can be sitting next to snakes, but when worship gets real, anything and everything that's not like God will get exposed and consumed by the fire of God. That's why the old saints would sit in church and say, I wish somebody's soul would catch on fire. And so I, I got to catch on fire, and you catch on fire, you catch on fire, and everything that's not like God's kingdom and conducive to God's move will be exposed and destroyed. Because a demon cannot sit comfortable when the house is on fire. But you got to understand there's three things that keep fire going. There's heat, there's oxygen, and whatever fuels the fire. There's heat, there's oxygen, and whatever fuels the fire. And so you got to be careful of fire extinguishers. You really got to be careful. You got to be careful of distractions. You got to be careful of deception. And you got to be careful of things that try to cool you off. Don't judge my worship when you don't know my warfare. Let me say that one more time. Don't judge my worship when you don't know my warfare. You may have come for a Sunday morning social gathering, but I came because I got something going on. And so I'm going to stay there and lift my hands and cry till I cry and shout till I shout until I get the attention of God because I've got a war going on in my life. So don't judge my worship. And we can't be judging each other's worship because we don't know anybody else's warfare. Somebody in here needs got a breakthrough and need it now. And so if they want to stand up and clap their hands, if they want to run around, if they want to shout, if they want to sing a song, stop. Let it happen. Don't judge my worship if you don't know my warfare. Don't try to put your, 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 your cold water on my hot worship. Because when you start taking away the heat, you start taking away the worship. And don't talk to me about stuff ain't got nothing to do with God and me and you when I come in God's house. I ain't got time for it. Because I got things I need God to do in my life, in my family, in my heart. I need him to break some habits in my life. But then there's oxygen. There's oxygen. Uh, oxygen basically is the wind of the spirit. If you cut off the oxygen, I, I use candles at the house every now and then. And, and I, I like the candles that have the top. Because if you got the top, then when you blow it out, you don't have to worry about the smoke being in the house. But if you just take the top of the candle, I said we're going to get out. The top of the candle, y'all, and put it on the, ca the burning candle, it'll extinguish itself because it's cut off its oxygen. And you do know things in this world try to cut off the wind of the spirit in your life. One thing is busyness. A second thing is ignorance. Ignorance of the work and move, the person, power, and presence of the Holy Spirit is dangerous. Because while God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are all together, they're all one, uh, uh, inseparable, the one that's working in your life now to help you understand the word whereby you get revelation to produce real worship to, to understand your relationship and, and, and unconditional love kindred to the Father is the person of the Holy Spirit. So, so ignorance to the person and work of the Holy Spirit in your life puts out your fire. It puts out your fire. It suffocates you because there's no wind of the Spirit in your life. Oh, if I had time. But then there is fuel, y'all. The fire has to have something that's keeping it burning. It's either, it's either going to be gas or wood. Every now and then, you need to be around somebody who's not taking away all your anointing and your, and your peace. But somebody who's putting wood on your fire. Oh, I wish I had time. You need, we need people in our lives that's going to help us go stronger in the Lord. 
not just be attached to the church, but to go stronger in the Lord. We need somebody who's going to fan the flame of our fire. And guess what, Regina? When nobody else is around, fan your own flame. Encourage yourself. Prophesy to yourself. Lay hands on yourself. Speak the truth of God to yourself. Because sometimes ain't nobody around and you need to, burn, you need to fan the flame so that you can get some oxygen and some fuel in your worship. I wish I had time. There's nothing like a faith that worships. And I want to share this with you. Worship in the house, this house, does not start in this house. The, the, the measure of the fire of worship in this house is directly connected to the measure of fire in your house. Who oh God. You can't come to church trying to get it all. You need to bring some wood, bring some fire, bring some praise, bring a testimony, bring a clap, bring a gra attitude of gratitude. You gotta bring something. And if you come on fire, and you come on fire, and you come on fire, when that person that needs deliverance shows up, they'll be in the fire of the presence of the Holy God. Faith has to worship. Faith must worship. Faith must worship. It's not just believing God, but it's giving God. And I'm going to close with this. You can't worship without a sacrifice. You cannot worship God without a sacrifice. There are no blessings without a sacrifice. There's no blessing without a sacrifice. Y'all looking at me funny? Turn to your neighbor. There's no blessing without a sacrifice. There are some things that are acceptable to God, and there's some things that are not acceptable to God. Watch this. God tells us, um, um, present our bodies a living sacrifice. God says, offer God a, watch this, a sacrifice of praise. Because the fire is on the altar, and the altar is the place of sacrifice. We got to understand that you got to give of yourself until it hurts. And God, and that will bring God attention in your life. Let me say it in terms we can understand real easy, we can get out of here. You got to get out of your comfortable place. If you if 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 you if you uncomfortable lifting your hands, if you're uncomfortable confessing your truth, you're not bringing a sacrifice. If everything's got to be going on good in your life before you can give God praise, that's not a sacrifice of praise. If you got to have money left over, you can't figure out how you're gonna uh, pay your bills and hold back your tithe, that's not a sacrifice. But I'm looking for about five of y'all to help me close this little message of mine. This is I, I have the faith to believe God can do whatever he wants to do. I got a faith to believe he can touch the intangible. He can work a miracle that he's never worked before. I got the faith to believe that God can do whatever he wants to do and that faith in my present standing in opposition of the enemy the flesh and the world i've got hope that god's gonna work it all right those saints would sing i gotta feel it everything is gonna be all right i heard what the doctor said i heard what you said he said and she said but deep down in my spirit i gotta feel it that everything's gonna be all right. I know what they said. I know what the statistics are, but I gotta feel it, that everything's gonna be all right. I know what my bank account says, but I've gotta feel it.
said, everything's going to be all right. He told me he'll never leave me. He told me he'll never forsake me. I've been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or a seed begging for bread. Y'all, my brother says, I got a feeling that everything's going to be all right. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. Mama gone, daddy gone, granddaddy gone, but guess one day I'm going to be gone. I've got a feeling everything is going to be all right. And that's why I praise him. That's why I give him glory. That's why I lift him up. That's why I bow before him. That's why I give him praise. That's why I lift him up. That's why I lift my hands. Because I know one day, and it won't be long, one glad morning, it won't be long. God's going to work it all out. If you just hold on, hold out, hold on, and hold out. But while you're holding on, get your praise on. Come on, we going to the table. But I dare about two or three of you to open your mouth and give God a sacrifice of praise. I dare about two or three of you to open your mouth and give God a sacrifice of praise. I dare about two or three of you to look back over your life and think things over. And no, it wasn't your money that brought you out. It wasn't the medicine that brought you out. It wasn't the rehab that got you clean. It wasn't the psycho, the, the therapist that kept your mind. But you know that God did it for you. If you know God did it, put your hands together and give God your best hand cap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, I thank you. We bless your name. Please don't look at me, but just give God praise. Yeah, Lord, fill me, mold me, shape me into an instrument that you can use. Oh, God, I thank you. Do something supernatural. Do something extraordinary. I need a ridiculous blessing. I need an incredible blessing. I know that's right. I need a gigantic blessing. Right now. Oh yes, Lord. We thank you, Lord. As we stand together, take it. Come on, worship. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship. Rejoice. Take joy in what you hear. Let it in your ear. Come on, y'all look at the wrong place and look to Jesus. We exalt. We exalt thee. We exalt thee. Oh Lord. We exalt thee. 
we exalt thee we exalt thee okay this time we're gonna make it personal make it personal I exalt thee come on exalt him exalt him Oh Lord, come on, exalt him, exalt him from your heart, from your spirit. I hear. Oh, I exalt thee. If you've never given your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you've never asked him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, he loves you so much that he died for you, shed his blood for you, to forgive you of all your sins. And he wants, the Lord wants to give you eternal life. He wants to give you life meaningful and full. And all you have to do is receive it. If today you want to give your life to the Lord, why don't you come out of the row where you're standing, come out of the seat where you're sitting, and come down one of these aisles and we're going to help you have an eternal life, an eternal relationship with the Lord Jesus. If there's someone today, maybe you've already given your life to the Lord, but you don't have a church home. You don't have a place where you can grow and exercise your gifts and be accountable. We welcome you to the Union Church. We exalt. We exalt thee. You may be seated. Oh Lord. We exalt thee, Lord. One of the ways we worship the Lord is we make sure that the cross, Christ and him crucified, doesn't get far from our heart. So the Lord established the Eucharist, the Holy Communion, that we would remember him, that we would come to his table having examined our hearts, confessed our sins, and asked God to cleanse us from our sins, restored and reestablished all broken relationships in our lives and make sure we're living in alignment with the cross. For the Bible says that if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we come in obedience, having been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Zoom in, please, that we <coughs> may be in alignment with one another. We may be that church. That means the human church that universal church that we may be the church that god is looking for in these last and evil days so let us just pray our father and our god in the name of jesus we we know that you sit high and you look low we thank you that your mercy endureth unto all generations but you told us to confess so we come and ask you to search our hearts and if there's anything that grieves you that you will forgive us and cleanse it and remove it from us, that we might be in holy and right standing with you. Bless us not only individual but as a church family, that we would be in love with one another, not just love, but in love with one another that will conquer all bitterness, jealousy, and strife. Thank you for this table that you've established. Bless it now and turn it, these elements from a carnal use to a spiritual use. 
Do it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. The words to the hymn will be on the song, on the screen, as we prepare for the Holy Communion together. Let's lift our voice in the cross. Has everyone been served? Does anyone need assistance? You need assistance over there.
For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death until he comes. You have two options. You can place the cup in the, in the seat back holder in front of you. Or you can, if you're near the end, you can put it in there. The Bible says, and they sang a hymn and went out. Let's stand. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Down at the cross Where my Savior died Down where Sin from sin I cried There to my heart Singing Scream I'm singing to my heart was the blood of life. Oh, I'm so wondrously Jesus, Jesus so sweetly applied within there to the cross where he took me in. Everybody, everybody, I'm singing. Glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name, precious name. Oh, there to my heart was the blood of life. Singing glory to his name. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling. And present you faultless before his glorious presence with exceeding and great joy. To the only wise God be our Savior, now, henceforth, and even forevermore. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Amen.